Okay, we're on week seven now of 52 Reason and Record Tips. And in this week's episode, we're gonna continue on what we discussed last week uh, about multiband processing inside of Reason and Record. And there were some questions from some of you viewers out there about the parallel compression example that I just touched on. So I'm gonna actually cover that in depth this week, a little bit about what parallel compression is and how you can achieve that inside of Reason and Record. And we're also going to take that record song file that I uploaded last week and we're going to break down how you can create those multiband splits inside of Record and do things like multiband compression or even multiband parallel compression inside of Record. And again, more patching, so see you in a bit. The first thing we will cover is parallel compression. Parallel compression is also sometimes called New York compression, and it's a form of upward compression and is achieved by mixing an unprocessed dry or, or lightly compressed signal with a heavily compressed version of the same signal. And rather than bringing down the highest peaks for the purpose of dynamic range reduction, it accomplishes a similar result by bringing up the softest sounds, adding more audible detail. Almost works as an upwards expander. Let's hear what it sounds like on the entire mix of a track. Here I have a song which has been mixed down and is not using any mastering at all. As you can hear, it definitely needs some work to make it sound like a finished product. Now, let's add a mastering suite combi to the end of the chain by selecting the hardware output in Reason, and then select Create Effect from the Create menu. In the Reason Factory Sound Bank Refill, select the M-Class Mastering Patches folder, and then select the 8-band Parallel Compression Patch. Right away, we hear a difference. But why? Well, let's look at the patch. On the Combinator, Press the Show Devices button. Wow, lots of stuff going on, but don't get scared. Most of what you see here is basically what we created last week in the multiband compressor tutorial. As you can see, we have stereo images for the band splitters and then compressors for each band, just like last week. Where things might seem a little confusing is down here. Here we have two 14 by two mixers and a spider audio merger splitter. Now the way parallel compression works is to combine the sound of the mix without compression with a heavily compressed version of it. And I achieve that by splitting each band of the mix into eight separate frequencies and routing them to individual mixer channels, as you can see here. Then I use the aug sends of the mixer channels to feed into each compressor. Since we only have four aug channels on the 14 by two mixer, and we have an eight band compressor, I needed to use two separate 14 by two mixers to get eight aug sends. In record, this setup is much easier since we do actually have eight aug sends in that program. As you can see here, bands one through four are on mixer one, and bands five through eight are on mixer two. If you were to solo or mute some of the channels on these mixers, you're gonna to start to hear the bands isolated. The outputs of the compressors were fed back into the AUGS returns for each mixer, respectively. To achieve a proper parallel compression sound, I set each compressor to a ratio of about 2 to 1 or 3 to 1, depending on how heavy you want the compression sound, and the threshold all the way down, so the compressor is basically always on, and then increase the input level to the compressors. I used the Spider Audio Merger Splitter to merge the outputs of both of the mixers to a stereo mix and then routed that back to the output of the combinator. The great thing is that you don't have to do any of this work, just add this preset onto the final mix of your song and you're gonna get great results. I do suggest that you watch the master level of your final mix that is fed into the parallel compressor patch so you don't overload the inputs and get clipping. Now, moving on to multiband processing and record using the SSL channel compressors. Using the four band compressor template song that I uploaded last week, let's look at how you achieve the multiband splits. As I mentioned last week, the purpose of this template is to take a final mix of a song you've created, which is a WAV or AIF file that did not use any mastering in the final mix, and load it into record. You can see here I have a song loaded into the track that says load audio here. When I look at the rack and flip it around, you can see that I used the direct out of that audio track and fed it into an M-Class imager to do the splits just like in last week's episode. 
And the same as last week, we are also using the solo low and high band buttons and the separate outs on the back of the imagers to have the split frequencies on their own dedicated outputs. The difference here is that I wanted to use the SSL channel compressors of record for the compression instead of the M-Class compressors. But why? Because they sound different. To achieve this, I created four mix channels and routed the split outputs into those mix channels. To make sure that I'm able to sum those individual mix channels back to a stereo mix, I used the Spider Audio Merger Splitter as a merger, connecting the direct outs of each of those mix channels. When you use the direct outs of a mix or audio track, it removes it from the master section of a chord, but retains all the channel settings like EQ and dynamics. Next, I created another mix channel named Post Comp Mix or Post Compressor Mix and routed the merged output to the input of that channel. This is the channel which has the final stereo mix for the compressors and is sent to the master section. So what does it sound like? Well, it sounds like this. To create a parallel compressor in Record, the principle of blending the original uncompressed version with the compressed version still applies, but it takes just a bit more routing and looks like this. Sorry, but that one's for me only right now. I might share that in the future, but feel free to have a go at it by looking at the screenshot that I've got here. Okay, lots of information this week, lots to digest. So join me again next week and we'll continue on in this journey. And again, please send me those emails because everything that you send in, I'm jotting down for future episodes. Thanks again. I'm James Bernard. See you in a week.